In this risotto I will be using two shallots and four garlic cloves. You can add other ingredients to your risotto like mushrooms, zucchini, carrots, etc. But I want to show you the most basic recipe. Start with taking the top off from the shallot and then split it down the middle. Make cuts through the shallot and then turn it and dice the shallot into smaller cubes. Do this for both shallots and then you set them aside for later. Now we're going to prepare the garlic. Crush the garlic against a hard surface with your knife. It will make it easier to peel. Take the peel off and then you cut the garlic into the smallest pieces you can with the sharpest knife you got. Since I'm terrible at this, I just go over the garlic a few more times to make the pieces smaller. Do the same for the rest of the garlic and set them aside. What I typically use to make a risotto is a wok pan. It's not very traditional, but I do like the high sides of a wok. Generally, any type of pot or pan with high edges will work for this. Use what you got. Add some olive oil to your pan and let it get hot. Just before the oil starts smoking, you can add the shallot and garlic. Once the shallots have become translucent, you can add the arborio rice. Toast the rice with the rest of the ingredients, but make sure nothing is burning. When the rice has been lightly toasted, go ahead and add 200 milliliters of white wine. When the wine has completely evaporated, you can start adding one ladle at a time with broth. You can add any type of broth you would like, but today I went with a beef broth. But both vegetable and chicken broth will work as well. If you want to know more, or make your own stock, I will leave a link in the description. I usually have around 2 liters of broth, which I admit it's a lot, but you do lose quite a lot of steam when boiling it open like I do. If you use a lid, you can probably get away with only using 1 liter of broth. And here's the part that many are scared of when making the risotto, the stirring. Well, it's important to stir, it will not make or break the finished product, at least not continuous stirring. So if you want to stir less, then please go ahead and lower the temperature. It will increase the cook time, but you can relax a bit more. It's a trade-off. Then we add broth, and we stir, and we wait. Broth, stir, wait. When the texture of the rice is to your liking, you can go ahead and add 50 grams of butter along with 100 grams of grana padano. Stir to combine. The risotto should not be runny, so make sure it's thick enough. We don't want soup. Put the risotto in a deep bowl, but we're not finished yet. Oh, that's a risotto. You might ask yourself what you should do with the leftovers, and I will share a recipe for that really soon. In the meantime, have you seen my farmer's stew? I'll share the recipe here on screen for you. 